Good evening class. In the previous class, I have already talked about a general introduction to Age of Revival and we have covered two major rebellions that was Cad's Rebellion and War of Roses. Now in case if you have missed that video, I will request that please go through part first of Age of Revival and then you can go through this video that's important works. So in this video, I'll be talking about important writers and important works of this period that is Age of Revival. So first important writer and his works during Age of Revival is Roger Asham. So Roger Asham was a British humanist, scholar and writer who was famous for his prose styles. He was famous for prose styles and promotion of vernacular language. He served in the administration of Edward VI, Mary I, Elizabeth I and he was tutor of Queen Elizabeth of Greek and Latin. Now I have already talked about Edward VI, Mary I and Elizabeth I. We have already covered this in Tudor age. I hope you remember this. So he served in the administrations of all these three and he was a great tutor of Queen Elizabeth. His success in tutoring three females, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth and Lady Jane Grey, has led some to consider a sham as an early proponent of education for girls. Now his first work was Toxophilus. Toxophilus, friends, is also called as lover of bow. Now, if you transform, if you translate Toxophilus in English, it's called as Lover of the Bow. So, this was the first book Roger Rosham wrote on archery in English. And this book of Roger Rosham was dedicated to Henry VIII. Now, he was the son of Henry VII. So, this book is dedicated to Henry VIII. And the book dealt with archery. The work is a platonic dialogue between Toxophilus and Philologus. You only need to remember these points. Next work was Schoolmaster. Now this work Schoolmaster by Roger Asham was a simple plain work and it deals with the importance of education and how education should be spread in England. Now its major motive was the spread of education and making a person as a total on the whole making a person as an intellectual personality okay students moving to the next writer of this time was erasmus so erasmus was a dutch philosopher and christian scholar he was considered as one of the greatest scholars of northern renaissance He was a part of Protestant Reformation and served in Catholic Church as a priest. Now he knew that church was corrupted but he wanted to reform the church so he kept distance from Henry VIII, Martin Luther, John Calvin and recognized the authority of Pope, adopting a middle way with deep respect for traditional faith and rejecting and rejecting Martin Luther's emphasis on faith and his major work was in praise of folly. Now in praise of folly is an essay written in Latin. It's a satirical work and it's attack on superstitions and other traditions of European society that were existing at that time. And this work of Erasmus in praise of folly is considered as one of most notable works or important works of the Renaissance and played important role in the beginning of Protestant Reformation. I'll be explaining you Protestant Reformation further. Moving to the next writer. Moving to the next writer which is Thomas More. Now this is a bit lengthy so you have to tolerate and Thomas More 
served Henry VIII. So Thomas More served Henry VIII and he wrote Utopia. And this book Utopia is about the political system of an imaginary island state. Now this book Utopia is divided in two parts and uh, that's book one and book two. So we'll be discussing both book one as well as book two. So, okay. So talking about book one, the first book contains a discussion of governance in Europe and generally and specifically in England. So we'll be talking about Utopia and we're talking about book one, which contains discussion of governance in Europe. And this Thomas More served in the kingdom of Henry VIII and he was later executed for treason. Or we can say book one critically presents society as it is organized irrationally by pride. Now, taking the summary of book one. So in book one, Utopia explores the idea of property from several different points of view. And in book one, you'll be meeting an imaginary character, Raphael Hotlerday. So Raphael Hotlerday is an imaginary character in book one. And this is also a question that can be asked in net and has been asked that who was the uh, imaginary character in book one. So that was Raphael Hotlerday. So Raphael Hathleday uh, in book one is the character who is imaginary and he debates about the proper punishment of a thief. So he talks about that what punishment does a thief should get and Hathleday argues that putting a thief to death is unjust. So this was his point of view that putting a thief um, to death is unjust for several reasons and he has discussed that reasons that first he says that he argues it does nothing to stop others from stealing nor does it teach the thief to understand why stealing is wrong second he says that it encourages thief to tell anyone who sees them commit their crime as punishment will be same whether they kill or not so what he used to say is that uh, it encourages thief to kill someone because he knows that he will be hanged. So what if he just kill other and then he will be hanged? So this is not a valid punishment that you are hanging a thief. Third, he says that it violates God's will. So God tell us not to kill. Yet thieves who haven't themselves killed anyone are punished by death. So these were the three reasons that he explains that putting a thief to death is unjust. Now in this book, this character Raphael Hathleday, he travels to the new world and from there he discovers the fictional island of Utopia. Let me tell you students, Utopia means imaginary. So much of book one is a political debate among characters Thomas More, that's a writer, Hathleday, who is an imaginary character, and Giles. Hathleday describes a discussion. He had a variety of real and made-up man at a dinner party hosted by Archbishop of Canterbury. So he's describing a discussion where he used to have a variety of talks. And at the end of the book one, Hathleday offers to tell the gathered group about amazing culture and politics of Utopia. So at the end of the book, at the end of the party, Hitler Day tells people about the amazing cultures and politics of this imaginary island, which he is thinking of Utopia. So this was all about the summary of book one. Now in book one, from net point of view, two questions are very important. First, this imaginary character named Raphael Hitler Day, his name can be asked. And second, Raphael Hathleday is taken from Greek. So this word is taken from Greek and it means speaker of nonsense. I repeat, it means speaker of nonsense. So this question has been asked that what does the word Raphael Hathleday means? And it means speaker of nonsense. I hope this has been clear to you. You can just pause the video for a second and go through it. Now I'll be taking you through book two. 
so talking about book 2 uh this book 2 should be written or uh, sorry should be read in detail and book 2 is a in depth discussion of physical social and cultural aspects of utopia now this imaginary world imaginary island utopia uh utopias in depth description is been given by the character we have already described raffle hatlade and by the end of book 2 you'll have a well rounded vision that how a fictional and imaginary utopia to live in look like and uh, students this is very important and many questions will be asked from this part so uh, take every point in detail and just fit in your brain so this chapters include first according to more the island of utopia is the island contains 54 cities and each city is divided in four equal parts note down this that island contains 54 cities and then he'll be describing about it so he says description of utopia that according to geography and according to geology it's divided into 54 cities and it has many farms so remember it has many farms now question from this part will be asked in the form of uh, either in the form of match the following or you will be given some options that utopia has farms utopia has this utopia has that so you have to tick the correct one so remember this it has 54 cities and it has many farms now of their towns particularly of amarot the chapter explains the layout of utopian cities and layout of houses and gardens now there were houses and gardens too in this imaginary cities and next we'll be talking about the magistrates so about the government he describes this chapter describes government and justice system of utopia so it also describes about about how the government is and about the justice system it includes a system that makes people slaves rather than imprisoning or executing them from crimes so no death penalty was there and they were not executed but rather they were make they were made slaves next talking about trades and manner of life so everyone in utopia be it be men women or children you have to work in agriculture now there was no tailor you have to make your own clothes you have to make your own clothes according to your fitting and you can enjoy every activity such as attending lectures playing games and there were houses and gardens and you were cared and shared so that no one owns anything now it's not like ye mera hai wo tera hai like it's like that everybody has the right to access and everybody has the right to use everything and nobody was owned by a particular person so this was about the imaginary uh, uh imaginary island as described by raffel hatlade moving further now talking about traffic so talking about traffic this chapter describes family structure of utopians and there were very specific rules so there were very specific rules by which the society was organized and then tra about traveling of utopians so utopians used to travel from city to city but they must ask for and receive permission to do so you have to ask permission if you have to travel from city to city talking about slaves and marriages that how slaves and how marriages was organized so utopians have many slaves we have already read that criminals were made slaves and there was no punishment and there was no death penalty and they were not executed but rather they were made slaves and so uh women's have more right and privileges than was common during more's time so this was most important during thomas more's time that women were given more rights and privileges and fewer that are common today so it's not uh today and during more's time women were given more privileges and divorce is possible but it was not common as it is today so it is all about imaginary island that raffel hatlade is talking about and then talking about the discipline military discipline 
Utopians detest war, but when they do fight, so they avoid war, but when they fight, they do some with the aim of avoiding bloodshed. So when they engage in fight, they avoid that bloodshed shouldn't be there. Talking about the religion, in Utopian, there are many religions. So what do people worship? They worship sun, moon, planet and many other ideals. It's very important and a question has been asked from this part too that what do they worship? So they worship sun, moon, planets and many other ideals. Now all these points have to be taken care of and okay I can repeat some of the notes. So agriculture was the main occupation of Utopians. Weaving, carpentry, metalsmithing and masonry were the main occupation of people. They used to stitch their own clothes. Women were given more privileges. All citizens have to work. Unemployment is eradicated and divorce was not common. And they used to worship sun, moon, planets and many other ideals. And uh, criminals were not executed. And there were free hospitals and... No lawyers were there and meals were taken in community dining halls. So these all were the major points uh, which you need to go through and talking. So the next major writer we have is William Tyndale. Now William Tyndale, William Tyndale wrote Tyndale's New Testament, the New Testament translation and the practice of prelates. Note down students. Tyndale's New Testament was incomplete work and this was published in year 1525. I repeat, it was incomplete work and was published in 1525, that is 1525. Then the New Testament translation, which was the full printed edition in English. So this was incomplete, whereas this was full printed edition. And it was published in year 1526, 1526. Then the third work, that is Practice of Prelates, this work was published in year 1530, 1530. Next major writer is Henry Howard. Henry Howard was given the title Earl of Surrey. He was given the title Earl of Surrey and this question has been asked in net examination. He was a poet with Sir Thomas Watt who introduced, um, who introduced into England the styles and meters of Italian humanist poets and he translated a number of Petrarch sonnet already which was translated by Watt and then Surrey was the first to develop the sonnet which was used by William Shakespeare. So he has developed sonnets which were used by William Shakespeare later. He was the first to use blank verse in English and this was a style adopted from Italian verse. All these points written here are important. He introduced blank verse, then Petrarch's sonnets are translated by him. He was the first to develop sonnets which were later used by William Shakespeare and he was given the title Earl of Surrey. So this was about Henry Howard. Now moving forward to our last major uh, writer that is Thomas Mallory. So Thomas Mallory was an English writer whose identity remains uncertain and he was famous of the work he was famous from the work Le Mort de Arthur. So he has written the famous work Le Mort de Arthur, which was a prose account in English and it talks about the rise and fall of legendary King Arthur. We have already talked about the legendary King Arthur and his round table in our previous uh, videos. So you can go through that video. So Th Sir Thomas Mallory has written an important work Le Mort de Arthur, which talks about King Arthur and his fellowship of round table. So this was it for today's class and these were all the major writers of Age of Revival. I hope it has been clear to you. 
if you have any doubts or you need any help and assistance please do comment down in the comment section below thank you so much for watching the video